Closer look at the man the U.S. swapped with Russia in exchange for the release of WNBA star Brittany Griner. CNN's Brian Todd has more on the notorious arms dealer Victor Boot. As you know, Brian, some call him the merchant of death. Now, that has been his nom de guerre in the past, Wolf. And as you know, Victor Boot was rumored for months to be the key part of any deal for Brittany Griner. We have new information tonight on a man believed to be an almost mythical player in the murky world of arms dealing. Victor Boot is believed to have cut a figure so legendary in the arms trafficking underworld that he's widely acknowledged as the inspiration for Nicolas Cage's character in the movie Lord of War. The arms bazaar was open. Guided missiles, unguided missiles, mortars, mines, armored personnel carriers, whole tank divisions. He's notorious. They made a movie about him. And he provided arms to all parts of the world in contravention of international law. Tonight, the man nicknamed the Merchant of Death is back in Russia. His 25-year prison sentence cut very short in a prisoner swap for Brittany Griner. Boot always denied breaking any laws. But before being apprehended in an elaborate sting in Thailand in 2008, he was believed to have funneled weapons to war zones from Africa to Afghanistan. Douglas Farah, co-author of a book on Victor Boot, says he was known as a charismatic figure, a devoted family man, but also as a bully who'd barge in on government meetings. If you look at the wars that were directly impacted by his weapons deliveries, you can see that they, they escalate directly in proportion to the amount of weapons arriving. So I would say certainly, you know, tens of thousands of people suffered, if not hundreds of thousands of people, because of the weapons he was able to deliver. Former CNN Moscow bureau chief Jill Doherty interviewed Boot in Moscow in 2002. At that time, he denied accusations that he'd sold weapons to the Taliban and al-Qaeda. Did you ever meet Osama bin Laden? Unfortunately, I don't have a chance to meet them. Maybe if I would on this position to meet them somewhere, maybe <laughs> on that period I would decide to do something to prevent what happened. I asked Jill if Boot struck her as fearsome. You know, at that point, he really didn't. He's kind of like a, you know, a big, goofy, oafy guy. Um, I did not get any vibes. You know, I guess you expect somebody with the rap like that to be kind of scary and fearsome, but he wasn't. Western intelligence officials said there was evidence Boot shipped arms to fighters in Africa in exchange for blood diamonds. He denied it. But U.S. officials say he routinely dealt with people like ex-Liberian president and convicted warlord Charles Taylor. We interviewed a former DEA official who took part in Boot's arrest in Thailand, who says there was no weapon, big or small, that Victor Boot wouldn't sell to you for the right price. A wide variety of weapons ranging from Antinov aircraft to air and ground missiles to AR-15s to a number of different military-grade weapons that he intended to supply to the FARC, a terrorist organization, for the purpose of killing Americans. Victor Boot's lawyer told CNN in a statement that the prisoner swap between his client and Brittany Griner is, quote, fair. The attorney said that since Russia's ambassador to the U.S. visited Boot in October at the prison in Marion, Illinois, where he was serving his sentence, that Boot had been very confident he would be released. Wolf, even in prison, he had swagger. Interesting indeed. Brian Todd, thank you very, very much. And joining us now, Bill Richardson, the former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations and the former governor of New Mexico. He played a very key role in helping secure the release of Brittany Griner, as well as other Americans who have been detained overseas. Governor, thank you so much for joining us. I know you've been working closely with Brittany Griner's family to help get her out. And I know you actually went to Russia recently, met with top officials there in that effort. What can you tell us about how this deal came together? All right, well, credit has to go to the Biden administration, to John Finer, the National Security Council, and the president who made this tough decision to uh, get Brittany Griner out in exchange for uh, Boot, who's a bad guy, an arms dealer. I had been to Russia twice. Uh, the good news is that we got a Marine out uh, earlier, um, and then Brittany Griner. So we now have to get Paul Whelan out. The inside stuff is, I, I can't get too much into it, but we were hoping for a two for two, Paul Whelan and Brittany for Boot and another Russian. But at the end, I think the geopolitical differences, the bad relationship between Russia and the United States, Russia said, we'll do one for one. And I think the president was right uh, to go ahead with Brittany Griner, get her home to her family, to her father, to her wife, uh, who I've been talking to constantly. But now we got to concentrate on Paul Whelan. 
And I think we have to make an effort to get him out before the end of the year. Yeah, because I think his family deserved that. He's wrongfully detained. He's a Marine. Uh, he deserves to come out. He's been there and detained for almost four years now. Paul Whelan spoke to CNN, Governor, about how Russia is treating him. I want you to listen to what he had to say. Listen to this. They've always considered me to be at a higher level um, than other criminals um, of my sort. And um, for whatever reason, uh, I'm treated differently than another um, individual here from a Western country that's also on a charge of espionage. So even though we're both here for espionage, um, I'm treated much differently than he is. And my treatment is also much different than um, others held for espionage at other prisons. So, Governor, why is he treated so differently? And where do you see talks on Whelan going from here? Well, we have tried my foundation for four years to get uh, Whelan out. And somehow it always falls short. We tried it during the Trump administration, early on in the Biden administration. And it seems at the very end, possibly because of the espionage charge, because he's a Marine, uh, because he uh, he's wrongfully detained, the Russians hold on to him at the very end. And, and this is what happened again. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a possibility that we can get him out. I think we can. I think that uh, the conditions are good. The good news is we got this other Marine out about four months ago. His last name is Reed. He was a young man who was not treated properly. Now, Brittany Griner. And now the next is Whelan, despite the fact, Wolf, that the relationship between Russia and the United States just keeps getting worse. And that affects negotiations. But I think the president made a decision. I think the Russians said it'll be one for one. And then the next move is Whelan. But, you know, his family, uh, his sister, his brother, uh, four years, you're right. The guy needs to come out. And yeah. I think he will. I'm optimistic. Um, I'm not negative. But, you know, the relationship, the Ukraine issue, the, the U.S.-Russia tensions on arms control, on human rights, it's not conducive to a negotiation. Yet it did happen. Brittany Griner is out on a negotiation. So is Travis Reed. So we got one more. And there are others also that we're trying to get out. Other Americans, there's one uh, POW in the Russian section of Ukraine, uh, Gordy Karasi, who who's, uh, needs to come out too. So we got more to do. But Whelan should be our next target. And I think the president is doing everything he can. I got to say that. His team, uh, John Finer, National Security Council, uh, the State Department, they're working hard yep. and they're doing everything they can. And we want to thank you, uh, Governor Richardson, for all you are doing as well behind the scenes. Really appreciate your joining us tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you.